What's up, 10th graders? Hope you guys are doing well. And here we go with your 7th Algebra 2 class. Now, today's class is going to be a little bit of a review of one of the old videos. Now, the reason is because since we've been doing block scheduling, um, when I uploaded those previous videos about two weeks ago and then last week, I pretty much gave you a review or practice problems for your online quiz, which is this Wednesday, guys. That online quiz link will be open from this Wednesday all the way up to April the 17th. Um, you can review with the videos that I sent you or the practice problems that you did. But remember, once you start the quiz, you have to finish it. It's not like you can pause it and leave it pending for like you know a week and then finish it a week later. Once you start it, you have to finish it. But that being said, let's go to... Um, today's topic, which continues to be solving quadratic equations by using ax squared plus bx plus c form. Um, and I'm actually doing example 5a and 5b on page 261. Now again, I know there is another video, an older video, of me explaining these exercises, but I decided to do them again this week and give you some more practice problems before moving on to the next section so that you guys can have more or less an idea of what we're doing. So. Um, in example 5a and example 5b, we're actually using the quadratic formula ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, what we're going to do now is not just merely factor them, but rather solve the equations to find the value of x. So if I have here 3x squared plus 10x minus 8, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this out. Now, um, the way that we did it prior and in the other videos, you can um, look it up is that I multiply the coefficient of this term times the coefficient of this term. So I'm going to multiply 3 times negative 8 equals negative 24. Now, what I'm going to do now here is find factors of negative 24 that when I add them actually equal positive 10. So I can say, you know, negative 6 and 4, which equals 24, and negative 6 plus 4 equals 2, so that can't be it. Um, I could say negative 6 and negative 4, but then again, negative 6 and negative 4 is going to equal positive 24, so that's not it. So the other factors that I can use are actually, I can say, 12 times negative 2. Because 12 times negative 2 is negative 24, and 12 plus negative 2 is actually positive 10. So we're going to change that and we're going to say 3x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Now what I did was I turned the 10x into 12x and negative 2x because what I did was I multiplied 3 times 8, which equals negative 24, and the factors of negative 24 that add up to 10 are actually 12 and negative 2. After that, we're going to factor by grouping, guys, so that means that you're going to basically just put everything into two separate parentheses, okay? And we're going to say 3x squared and 12x. What are the common factors between 3x squared and 12x? What number divides by 3 that also divides by 12? And that would be, of course, 3 but I also have to include the variable. So it's actually not just 3x squared and 12x, it's actually 3x. And I'm going to write it down here so I have some more space. And you actually have 3x times. And what you're going to do now, guys, is actually just um, divide the first parenthesis by 3. and Or by 3x, excuse me. And this is actually going to equal x. And then 12x divided by 3 is actually going to equal 4. So I know on one side I'm going to have 3x times x plus 4. Now so pardon my neighbor's dogs, but well, this is a new reality and they're just excited about math. So pardon that interruption. Anyway guys, going back to this. So again, we found the common factor between 3x squared and 12x, which is 3x, which is why I divide everything by 3x. And 3x squared divided by 3x is x, and 12x divided by 3x is 4. And now I'm going to look for a common factor between negative 2x and 8, and it's actually negative 2. So negative 2 is what I'm going to do here, and then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Okay? So negative 2 divided by negative 2x divided by negative 2 is actually x. And negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4, so x plus 4, and that equals 0. Which means 
that I have factored everything out and I'm gonna give you guys a minute to see what I did there. And now that I have a common factor, I'm actually gonna solve the equation for zero or for x, excuse me. Okay, so I'm giving you a second to kind of look at what um, I did there. And then we're just gonna basically factor everything out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I have 3x minus two, which is what I'm gonna write here. And then the common factor, which is x plus four, what? and all that equals zero. So what I do now is I actually solve what? What? each equation individually. So three x minus two what? equals zero, and x plus four what? equals what? zero, okay? So three x minus two equals zero, I move the two to the other side, or I add two on both sides. What? And this is actually gonna be three x equals two, and I divide by three, what? What? and x equals two thirds. And then on this side, I have x plus 4 equals 0, and I actually subtract 4, and x equals negative 4. So there you go, guys. That is my answer. For example, 5a. Real quick, I'm going to give you guys a minute to look at it, and then I'm going to move on to the other side so we can do the other example, and then that will basically be the end of our video. All right, so here in example 5b, it's a little different. Because the equation doesn't equal to zero, the equation equals to another equation. So that means that I have to first combine like terms. Now, I always want my equation to equal to zero. So let's say that this equal to another number that's not zero. Well, in that case, I'd have to move that other number to the other side of the equation so that everything equals zero. And I know that sounds a little abstract, but when I do this example, you're, you're kind of going to get the idea of what I mean. So all this has to equal zero, which means I have to combine like terms. So are there any like terms with 5p squared? None. So I leave 5p squared alone, and I don't really do anything to it. And then what you're actually going to do is 16p and 4p. That actually has a like term, so I'm going to subtract 4p on both sides. And let me write the 5p squared a little bit lower, so that we have more space. And this is going to cancel out. And negative 16 minus 4p is actually negative 20p. And then I have the minus 5. So I'm actually going to add 5. And this side is going to cancel out. And 15 plus 5 is 20. So plus 20 equals 0. And this is what I mean by equaling it to 0. Now that this is equal to 0, I can solve the equation. So I can actually solve this equation, but I'm still missing um, something. And in this case, I actually have to factor out. I actually have to factor out, find a common factor between the, um, the numbers or the terms that I have there. And I'm going to give you guys a second to see what I did before I move on with the next example. All right, guys. So I have to find this uh, a factor. Now, 5 p squared, 20p, and 20. The only possible factor that I have there is 5. And I don't use any of the variables because the p is only present in the first two terms. It's not present in the 20. So 5 is my common factor, which means that now I'm going to divide all of this by 5. And 5, five p squared divided by 5 is p squared. And negative 20p divided by 5 is negative 4p minus 4p, and then 20 divided by 5 is 4, and all that equals 0. All right, guys? So there you go. I'm still not done with the exercise because I have a 5, and I also have 3 terms, and I don't know how to find the value of p. So bear with me because this is an extra step, um, but it's really not that complicated. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this 5, okay? Now, how do I do that? Well, technically... I'm multiplying 5 by what's inside of this parentheses, and that's going to give me my original problem, right? So if I'm multiplying, I want to get rid of the 5, I actually divide. So what I'm going to do first is divide this side by 5, and this side by 5, and this is going to cancel out, and that's going to be p squared minus 4p plus 4 equals 0. So I just divided both sides by 5, 
okay? And 0 divided by 5 is 0, and that gives me p squared minus 4p plus 4 equals 0. But it's still not factored. So here I factored by grouping. That's not the case here. In that case, I have to use one of the special products of binomial formulas. Now, check it out. I have a trinomial and I have a minus sign between them. And which one am I going to use? Well, you're going to use the formula that says a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And obviously, this is a and this is b. And that equals a minus b squared. So I'm actually using this formula to factor it out. And for those of you that are confused, what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to look for a number that when I add equals um, negative 4, but when I multiply equals positive 4. So what number when I add equals negative 4 and when I multiply equals positive 4? And that would be 2. So that's why if you look, this equation is in the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which is given equal to a minus b squared. So I'm going to turn this into this. And that means that I'm going to say, I'm going to say p minus 2 squared equals 0. Okay? But I'm still not done with the exercise. What do I do now? Because there's an exponent of 2 here, and I need to find the value of p. Now... I was explaining to someone who had a doubt with this example that here, if you notice, x gave you two answers because you had two different equations, right? Here, this is actually going to give you one answer. And the reason that it's going to give you one answer is because this is the same thing as saying, and although in section 4.5 we're going to find another method, which is much easier, for now, I, got, I want you guys to understand that p minus 2 squared is the same thing as saying p minus 2 times p minus 2, which equals 0. Now, since it's the same equation, all I'm going to do is just answer it once. That's it. What happened? Well, nothing. That p minus 2 squared is the same thing as saying p minus 2 times p minus 2, which is going to give me p squared minus 4p plus 4. So that means since the equation is the same, instead of solving it two times, I only solve it once because I'm going to get the same answer regardless. So you're actually going to say p minus 2 equals 0. I add 2 on both sides. This side cancels out, and we have that p equals 2. And that's it, guys. That's the end of example 5b. That's actually on page 261 of your textbooks. So you can go ahead and look at those and you can refer to them and, and redo them if you have any doubts. And for practice, this week, you're going to do page 263, problems 37 through 39. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this week is a lot shorter than your previous weeks because Thursday and Friday we're going to be on spring break. Um, so I only gave you this exercise for today, and on Wednesday, I want you guys to focus on your online quiz. I'm going to upload another video sometime either later tomorrow or Tuesday um, explaining how you're going to be working with your online quiz. Remember, once again, that online quiz is actually going to be um, visible to you guys starting Wednesday, and you actually have from this Wednesday, April 8th, until Friday, April the 17th, to answer it, ladies and gentlemen. But remember that once you start it, you must finish it. So before you go ahead and answer that quiz, review the videos, check your practice problems. If you have any questions, I'm going to be available on the virtual classroom only this week, Tuesday. All right, guys? So I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. And this is, of course, your favorite teacher saying bye.